Hello everyone and welcome back to Markers and Monsters. As always, I'm Colin and October is rolling right along here in this year of our Lord, 2020. Today we're going to be talking about the legend or folklore of Bloody Mary. This is something I remember from being a kid as uh, elementary school age as being um, not a big deal, but something everybody really did. And it kind of goes back to its old roots around Halloween. As you can see, I'm starting out here by drawing a bathroom sink and mirror. Got some cups, some toothbrushes there, a little bit of toothpaste. And in the mirror is this uh, horrific figure that I'm drawing in of, of course, Bloody Mary. I'm making her kind of being reaching out of the mirror, one hand coming out uh, to grab you, one hand kind of on the edge of the sink, almost uh, kind of like the little girl from the ring coming out of the TV. Uh, I tried to make this kind of look like my bathroom from when I was growing up as a kid with like the simple um, the simple sink there, you know, the toothpaste on it, those three orb lights there up at the top. And uh, when we get to coloring it in, you're going to see I'm going to use a lot of blues and purples to kind of give this a, a nighttime feel. If you guys don't know about Bloody Mary, yeah, this uh, this was the thing that kind of went around, you know, the, the school and whatnot. It seemed like every kid knew about this. But if you went into a bathroom... Uh, or any place with a mirror, but, you know, growing up kind of in the middle of nowhere, where were there mirrors? The bathroom. You go in there, you shut off all the lights so it's pitch black, and you stare into the mirror, and you say, Bloody Mary, five times into the mirror. And if you do it, then yeah, the, the visage of Bloody Mary will appear terrifying, and, uh, you know, allegedly bad things will happen, although what those were were often very nebulous. Uh, it, she could kill you, or it would be a portent of your doom, or something horrible would happen, but nothing specific. Um, this was something that I remember, as I said, in elementary school, kids would dare each other to do, to go into the little bathroom we had in our little classroom, uh, shut off all the lights and do it. And you had to do it by yourself. You couldn't do it with anybody there. So, you know, it, it's that whole dare, I'll go in there and do it. Then the kid comes out. Did you do it? Yeah, of course I did it. And th their friends have no way of knowing if you did it or not. You're by yourself in there. Um, I remember being at my house and thinking about this as a kid, you know, ooh, should I do it? Like, what, what's what's going to happen? And being kind of afraid, you know, when it's dark and nobody's awake, everyone's asleep. And is, is she is she going to show up? What, what's going to happen? As an adult, I think, why why would you ever tempt fate like that? Like, if somebody told me that I could look in a mirror and say something and see a horrible ghost that would spell my doom... Whether I believe it or not, I just wouldn't do it. Like, <laughs> I don't, maybe if they told me this ghost was going to show up and if I said her name five times in the dark, she'd appear and give me like a million dollars tax free. Uh, yeah, sure. Then I then I'm unattempted. But uh, knowing that she's going to show up and kill me, a hard pass from your boy Colin on that. When you're kids, though, it's it's always, uh, you know, that pushing of boundaries. Can you do it? What's going to happen? Oh, my gosh. And uh, it's kind of fun uh, like that, at least to think about. Now, no one I know has ever gone in, said Bloody Mary five times and died. So that's, you know, I, that's a good thing. I don't want anybody to get killed. Um <laughs> Here we are. We're putting in that kind of that tile. Uh, I thought a little bit about my grandparents' bathroom growing up. They had pink tiles on the walls. Very, uh, very like 60s, 50s, 60s. So kind of went with that vibe. Then I toned it down with the purples there to give it that kind of nighttime feel. Um, yeah, this kind of goes back to old school turn of the century and 1800s Halloween stuff where Halloween wasn't about trick or treats and, and, you know, ghosts and monster movies and stuff like that. But uh, they'd often have these parties and they'd play like divination games, stuff like that. Like look into the mirror and uh, do a certain thing and you'll see the face of your future husband or potentially, you know, a, a grim specter will show you that you, you died alone or something like that and uh, shows you your grave. And it's always that kind of um, that risk reward thing of like, oh man, I could, I could possibly see a ghost. They'll tell me good things about the future or, or I'll see something terrible. I don't know. What am I going to get that, 
that kind of makes it a little bit fun there. Um, a lot of divination games happened in, in early, you know, Halloween type celebrations, the Ouija board type stuff and uh, other reading tea leaves, palmistry, all that was very popular. And uh, I think this Bloody Mary legend kind of spread out from there, you know, looking in the mirror and, oh, you might see you might see your grave or you might see your future husband. And of course, people take on the darker aspects. Oh, I hear a ghost shows up and and does X, Y and Z. Um, so I think that's where it came from, because there's really, as far as I can tell, no information about why it's called Bloody Mary. Um, there's been plenty of Marys in history that, uh, you know, it's a very common name and throwing bloody before it is seems, you know, pretty much like an easy way to make something a little bit grimmer, a little bit spookier. But uh, there's no real legend here. There's no real like, oh, yeah, Bloody Mary was this woman and this happened to her and this is why she appears in the mirror. No, it just it's one of those things that kind of springs up organically that, you know. Uh, who knows where it really comes from? It'd be interesting if somebody ever could figure that out, like definitively, instead of just uh, their thoughts on the matter. So let's get in here to the inking. I'm uh, kind of leaving the hair real stringy and gross. I think I was inspired again by the uh, little girl from The Ring um, to, to kind of leave that, that long, stringy, ghostly black hair look. And uh, kind of got that vibe. I wanted to give her like a horrible howling face, you know. I didn't want it to. Uh, I didn't want it to look like eh, maybe she'll tell you something good. I clearly wanted this woman to be up to no good, um, and I think I achieved that pretty well here. Left her eyes kind of beady there. Left the hands green like she's some kind of dead specter or something weird like that. Let's start to go in here and then polish it up. We're going to add in some lines to make it look like a mirror. We're going to put in some white lines, too, to give that little bit of reflection. Obviously, if I made this uh, drawing look like it was in pitch blackness, you wouldn't see anything. So there we go. Hey, let's take a look at the scan and see what we got. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, this is something that uh, I've been thinking about for a while. This year, I've been really thinking about uh, Halloween's as a kid and all the things I was into. And this just popped into my head, this uh, old Bloody Mary thing. Stand in front of a mirror, dare your friends to do it. Uh, it's fun, you know, you might get killed. Uh, so if you guys do any kind of divination this Halloween or any kind of weird urban legend, uh, dare each other to do stuff, I hope you get nothing but good news. And I hope your Halloween is awesome. That's it for me for today. This is Colin from Markers and Monsters, and uh, we'll see you later. Good night. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary.